Thank you for staying with us. The Nigerian Correctional Service says it is intensifying efforts to swiftly recapture the remaining fleeing inmates of the Sileja Medium Security Custodial Center. More than 100 inmates had escaped after a heavy downpour damaged the facility last week. Government says it will comb through villages, towns, and even IDP camps to track down and recapture inmates still on the run, as security forces have already helped in apprehending some of them. Meanwhile, the Minister of Interior, Ulubumi Tunjiuchu, after his visit to the affected custodial center, assured that government would relocate some of the centers to more suitable environments, citing overcrowding and the need for improved security and infrastructure to forestall such incidents from recurring. Joining us in the studio is a certified master anti-terrorism specialist, Dixon Asaje. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to Barbara. have you join us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Right. Now, there are those who have said that this incident shouldn't have even happened At all. in the first place. I, I, because you are now speaking in that direction. What do you think we should have done to avert what happened? You know, that incident is just like a joke. Uh, because here in Nigeria, uh, I think uh, we are taking ourselves for granted. Really? How yeah, do you mean? we're taking ourselves for granted because I don't see a reason why uh, at any given time we keep on having negative news, negative news all the time. If you don't have prison break, you have assassination. Yeah, if you don't have that, you have banditry, you have terrorism, you have government official messing up, you have someone not going to hear. You know, it's, it's, Nigeria is just like a plain ground, you know, it's just like a crime scene, you know. And I've said it many times without number that in a crime scene, you condone up the area and treat those uh, 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 criminal uh, activities. You know, what happened in the, in the prison uh, correctional facilities? He said, no, no, it shouldn't have happened because there was one that took place in, uh, is it uh, Kuje prison? Yes. Some years ago, we had some guys went in and break into that prison. And we all came on board and discussed and said, this should not happen because uh, the uh, head of the facility or the commandant of the facility knows better that when you house in criminals within a given environment, you must ensure that the parameters uh, uh, protection, the access control mechanisms, it's not something you break in swiftly. Uh, that is how sometimes most of these criminal elements in some international prisons, uh, if they want to you know, uh, run up from that uh, correctional facilities, they labor in vain for so long and they you know, get caught. Mm. Because if we have, for example, they say that there was a heavy downpour yes. and this downpour you know, breaks uh, the uh, access control measures and every other measures put in place, that tells you that that prison facility isn't a, wasn't fit for purpose mm. because these guys are criminal elements. Some are, are assassins, some are killers, some are, 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 are robbers, and uh, you allow them to be in a facility that is not even uh, well uh, coordinated and uh, is penetrable. It's wrong, and I don't think uh, the commander have any reason to justify the reason why those guys went out because I think it should be held accountable mm. for lack of... Uh, Effective, right. uh, you're starting on the note that Nigeria is a crime scene. It has to be cordoned off. So many people will disagree with you because they believe <coughs> that there are so many other good things too happening, you know, within the country. Even though, yes, we can't rule out we can't rule out the fact that we're having issues. But uh, this is not the first time we are having a prison break. Nigeria is like a within, crime scene. Like a okay, yeah. fine. <laughs> so uh, within within two to three years, we've had about um, eight eight different jail breaks and all of mm. that. Uh, <clears throat> how many of those clean inmates? Do you think we've been able to uh, rearrest again? Because uh, if we are not able to rearrest them, then what exactly do you think this will probably lead to? There'll be a threat to society, and that's what it's going to definitely be. Because there was one that took place in Edo State, my state. Uh, <laughs> most of those guys, some of them were captured, some of them were not captured, and uh, the one that happened in a. a it could be another prison. Some of them were not captured back. Yeah, yeah, so for me, I think uh, when an incident transpired in point A, it calls for an assessment in point B and point C. But when an incident transpired in point A and point B did not carry out an assessment of what went wrong in point A, take for instance, what transpired in Kuje prison did not send a signal to uh, Sudeja prison, did not send a signal to Krikri prison, did not send a signal to Bini prison, it tells you that some officers and men are not ready to do the job. Because what happened, when an incident happened, first of all, you carry out a post-metam analysis of that incident. Now, you yourself, uh, being a, a commander in a new area, what you need to do is that you study from that incident. What happened? What do we do? You carry out an assessment within the prison facility. Check the areas that are penetrable. 
check the area that are, that are fit for purpose, and check the area that are you know, effective in the area of access control so that criminal elements don't break in. So if we have this kind of incident happening, it tells you that we are not ready. And some people must be held accountable. If you don't hold people accountable, it will keep on recurring. Going back to your question how far people have been arrested, I, I, wouldn't, I don't have the numbers at hand. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, most of these guys, even though those that didn't uh, escape from this prison, from this uh, uh, prison break, yeah. some of these criminal elements, when they go to prison, they come out more hard enough criminals. Mm -hmm. Some of them you know, tend to you know, organize a very hard squad. I, I was privileged to you know, run an investigation on uh, some group of assassins that uh, tried to assassinate, assassinate my principal. And those guys, two of them that were arrested by the police, were ex-prison convicts. They were, they, the judge said there's no more evidence to prove they are criminals. And they came back from a hard squad to assassinate this man. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I trying to say? Most of these guys that have left this prison, some of them will go and look for their, uh, what's it called? Uh, their prosecutors. Some of them will go and look for those who put them in trouble. Some of them will go after uh, the life of those people that, uh, you know, frame them up if perhaps that ha really happened. So what the police needs to do is that they need to, uh, the prison facility needs to do is that, I don't know if they have done that as of today, they need to release their pictures to the public. They, they haven't done that, and that is also another issue that uh, some persons who are experts in this field are talking about that at this point, their names, pictures should have been published, but that is yet to be done. Uh, does that also point? Does that also point to the matter and manner of how we are handling this case? If we are really taking it serious, yes, it does. Because I believe that within 24 hours, except we don't have an effective data system that captures most of these criminal elements uh, for this uh, of, uh, prison correctional facility to have released uh, to release the, the, the names. For me, it shouldn't have taken them more than 24 hours. You see, the correctional facility itself is due to be declared for a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. And I've said this with that number, because the whole reason why that correctional facilities was established, be it private correctional facilities or public correctional facilities, is for retribution, is for correction, is for reformation. And perhaps if you, are in, if you committed a, maybe a felony or a crime that uh, deserves your life to be taken, then let, let it be within the, the confine of the law. But you don't go to the prison and come back from that prison more hardened of a criminal. Mm. So I believe that in exception of this incident, I will advise the Minister of Interior was there, fantastic yeah. guy. He should give a marching order. Let us know how many prison facilities we have in Nigeria. Send in experts or let them themselves carry out an assessment, vulnerability assessment of all the prison facilities in Nigeria. Check the vulnerable areas. Check the areas that you think that uh, criminal elements can successfully escape from. You understand? So you haven't carried out that assessment. We should take it to the government. Somebody will come and disagree and say, well, we've tried all our best. We've been informing government. We've sent them. The government is aware of all these things. If the government is aware and they're not doing anything about it, the duty of the commander is to consistently send reports about the facility so that that will be a basis for his own justification, for him to justify uh, or free himself from any accusation that, hey, I've been doing this. I've communicated to federal government about these facilities. So I've told them about the deficiencies and everything. Nothing has been done. Then we'll say, OK, but if you don't fire people or fire most of these correctional commanders for all this nonsense, I tell you, bigger ones will still happen. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth. Well, uh, this uh, Solidia Correctional Facility is actually built in 1914 and is actually designed to hold about 250 people. Now it held 499 people, where we are now looking for people, uh, the, the, uh, the jailbreakers who had actually escaped. Uh, the Minister of Interior said he would definitely relocate that particular facility, although we saw videos of it being you know, rehabilitated and all of that. Where, should, where do you think such correctional facilities uh, need to be you know, situated, and what are the things that they need to put in place? Correctional facilities can be situated anywhere in the world. Uh, because so, they are saying that because this one is located where it's now densely populated. A lot of people go in and come in, and it's now easier for people to you know, make it a, 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 a kind of object of target. Well, I was in the UK some few, uh, two, three months ago, and somebody was pointing a correctional facility to me. It was like a school. You understand? But you can't penetrate uh, that correctional facility because of all the target hardening. Because if you don't have an effective target hardening within a correctional facility, uh, you will be planning to fail. So it doesn't matter even if it's within a community. But uh, I, I strongly believe that because of uh, you know, the sensitivity of most of these issues, this correctional facility should be taken 
uh, away from is the Nigeria, from, yeah. from, 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 from the cities. Yeah. So that, uh, like uh, during NSAS and whatever the case may be, we saw a lot of jailbreak yeah. simply because these correctional facilities uh, were quick to access by most of these uh, people. But I tell you, no matter the insurrection, if you have an effective infrastructural uh, 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 built-in facility in place, it will be very difficult for you to penetrate such facilities. And that is why we, what we call target hardening. Now, if you break in from phase one, you meet phase two, access control. If you break in from phase two, you meet phase three. Now, criminals don't like delay. And I tell you that if you allow them to labor in vain, nobody want to try it. They say, hey, don't go to that facility. It's very difficult for you to penetrate. How do you want to penetrate? From gate one to gate two, gate three, and everything hardened. Just like, a, uh, is it Wall, wall of Jericho or mm, what was it yes. called? Something, something like that. So it's, it's doable. Security is doable. We can do this. Uh, you know, that's well, you like, know, they are not able to penetrate these facilities without the collaboration of someone from inside, from within. Whether there's a collaboration from someone within or without, the truth is if you have a very effective uh, architectural design in place, and that's why most times I would advise, if you are trying to build in correctional facilities or build, uh, prison uh, facilities, you must integrate security design. If you don't integrate, integrate security design, it will be very difficult. For example, the access uh, gates to the perimeters. Do you have retractable or non-retractable bullet system? Whereby in the case of an incident, maybe some people want to drive out or drive in, you activate the bullet system and it comes up. Mm. Whatever the case, maybe even if someone is coming with a bomb or a lorry, the bullet system will resist that assault or that attack, be it suicide bomber or premeditated, uh, premeditated crime. So if you have most of this uh, 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 design in place, you don't have any need to worry. I mean, in 1914, would we have had that? 1914, I would not. Okay, Guatama Bay. How old is Guatama Bay? Mm. The American prison, you can you, you go see. Yeah. How old is Guatama Bay? Yeah. There are many prison facilities in the world. And let me tell you something. But that one security. Is not with security. The yes, it isn't. The security, security, the world, this security we are practicing today started from architectural design. Right. I'm telling you, it started from architectural design. The ancient, uh, in, in, in ancient time, yeah. that was how yeah, security was covered because mm. people put in facilities, the, the cliff, the enclaves, and the, the uh, what's it called, uh, design, the, uh, the, the, the time of old yeah. where we have uh, animals, you know, eating human beings, you know. It just push them in. Push, yes, just push them in. So for me, I will tell you that no matter the years, mm. what matters most is what we call reevaluation, mm. monitoring and reevaluation. That is where you have to say, okay, this building has been here for 40 years. Can we start uh, renovation? Can we start putting in design? And that's why when it comes to security, you have to think ahead of the criminals because these criminals, first of all, capitalize on your vulnerability. So this incident that happened in the Suleja facilities is the vulnerable state of our security system. And these criminal elements capitalize on that vulnerability. What, 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 you said what, what, uh, 1940, or what did you say? Yeah. It's a, even a long time for the prison facility to have even... Uh, you know, plan and uh, also... Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's even where I'm going. That it, 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 what does it say of our effort towards addressing matters of security? If we left that facility from 1914, we didn't do any form of rehabilitation or improvement of the security architecture, like you have rightly pointed, and we are seeing uh, nature, now the one... Taking you know, charge. Taking charge and attacking <laughs> that facility. That's why, bringing that, it that, down. That, that's why I've said it on many for that Nigeria is blessed. Ask me why. Why? You just said nature <laughs> decimated that facility. Nigeria is suffering from human um, man-made disaster for a very long time. Mm. Just imagine natural disaster, what it has cost to that facility. If Nigeria is a country that suffers from natural disaster, then multiplied by our own handmade disaster, the killings we are killing ourselves in this country, the bandage and terrorism, we will disappear. Mm. But you see what has happened. Nature just came to show its skills, and it penetrated that uh, facility. So whatever the case may be, as a country, we must be ready at any given time. Because there's a saying that he will face to plan. Plans plan to, to fail. fail. So, so as a government now, what should we be doing at addressing this whole matter? Yes, the minister has said that they will look at relocating uh, these this inmates out of, of that facility as it is. To where will be the next question? Uh, because we have always been talking about the number of inmates in facilities how it is that we need to decongest, decongest. how we need, it is that we need to you know, build more facilities as it is. We've been mousing this for some time now, but we haven't seen any step taking. Perhaps there are low-hanging fruits that we might need to begin from <clears throat> as it is. You know, people are not being held accountable in our country. And that's when we talk about accountability. We're talking about accountability. 
from the horizontal and vertical plane. Mm -hmm. If you don't hold people accountable while in office, they will do nonsense. Because take, for example, uh, uh, the officer in charge. Okay, you, just, just before I get into these facilities, I passed through one or two access points, and the security stopped me. Where are you going to? And I know I didn't find it easy to come into this place. If you don't put in measures in place to ensure that criminals don't break in, because what, all what they need is an opportunity. You know, there's this saying that uh, 99 days for the owner, one day for the thief. Mm. No, one, one, 99 days for yeah, the thief, thief, one day one for, for, yeah. for the owner. It's a wrong parable. It's a wrong parable. <laughs> because I've grown up to realize that it's 99 days for the owner, one day for the thief. That one day is the opportunity, is a criminal opportunity. Mm. And you must not give them up. If criminals have 99 days, you are gone. Which, which, what do you, what, how will you survive one day over 99? No, no, no. What, what, what that, what that what? Maxim is saying is that... I understand. You may not you, catch the thief. Exactly. N 99 right, times, if you don't catch it, you, you, your property is no, finished. But you may just catch that just one day. It is one, one last thing you do that, you, that will make you get caught. <laughs> mm. but, but all of these, um, among those who have actually... Among the escapees, you know, we have those who are still awaiting trial. Okay. We have those who are already convicted. Okay. And the number of those awaiting trial are more than those that are convicted you know, yeah. within some of these facilities and all yeah. of that. Mm. And they said that justice delayed is justice denied. Justice, so yeah. how do you think we can begin to correct this? So, that, so much so that when we have people <coughs> who are accused, who are alleged of you know, certain crimes and all of that, you know, they expedite their cases. And uh, uh, if they have to be set free, they'll be set free. And if they have to be incarcerated, so be it. For me, I don't think justice delayed is justice denied. I've been hearing that parable for so long. But I will come from it's a security. Maxim. I will come from a, from a security perspective. Right. I think justice delayed is a shame and defeat to our judicial system. And uh, they should understand that uh, they are the last hope of the common it is man denied. in Nigeria. <laughs> so uh, if you say denied, it what if you finally get justice? <laughs> Will you return back the justice? Right. So for me, you know, We've not been look, talking about rest, uh, uh, restorative justice in our country, mm -hmm. and that's another big trouble we have in, in Nigeria, where victims of crime are being le uh, left alone. They are not being attended to. Uh, one of the major reasons why crime has been flourishing in Nigeria is because of the lack of restorative justice system. You know, in restorative justice, for example, uh, victims of crime, uh, you, know, you, you know, make sure you bring them back to their states of well-being. You don't just neglect them in the essence of, them not suffering from psychological or emotional distortion. So uh, if you look at what has uh, gone wrong this time around, uh, the judicial system has a lot to play. Uh, the Nigerian police, uh, uh, let me just clap for them. They're doing so well in apprehending these criminals because the criminal justice system comprises of the police, the court, and the prison. The police gets this criminal, uh, you know, charge this criminal to the court. The courts, you know, send them to the prison. And most times when they get to the courts, uh, this uh, justice delay of a thing, is disturbing. I don't know what is what is going So should we have special courts for, for those I, 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 will, I, will, I will really push for special courts where crime uh, uh, victims or uh, criminals have been uh, prosecuted so swiftly. Uh, because if you don't prosecute criminals swiftly, crime flourish. If you don't punish people, crime flourish. And that is why you see a lot of criminals, kidnappers are still in the prison without uh, seven years, eight years. Evans now has been in the prison for some years. I don't know what has happened. If you have any update on that, I don't know. Uh, that is not good for our system because uh, at the arrest of Evans, uh, uh, people get to know that you can make billions from kidnapping. And kidnapping is taking the right, is taking the boom in the criminal market. So, if, for example, uh, deterrent measures have been put in place, that's what we talk about. Deterrent measures, you know, you punishment mechanism, you know, result to deterrent measures. You could deter specific people, and you could deter general. Uh, it could be specific deterrence or general uh, deterrence. So, what I will advise is this: the judiciary should place and place. Uh, synergize with the Nigerian police and work hand in hand. Because it's also discouraging because I've been to the police stations one or two times or sometimes, and I you know what these police guys talk about the judicial system, how they frustrate them uh, in the area of uh, you know, prosecuting these criminals. So right. they should ensure that the labor of our police officers are not in vain. Interesting. Um, another matter is in security, we talk about if you see something, say something. In the neighborhood now, people within that uh, environment, how should they perhaps help the police? to do this. We know trust is an issue. And perhaps if people see these persons that, you know, that they don't have being, the pictures. That they don't have the pictures. No, but you can see strange faces. Uh, then what do you do? <laughs> what if you, you see, what is what first you alarm? You could re report. Right. You could report. That's, that's the essence of seeing something and saying something. Oh, I'm seeing someone. Some of them know who these people are that are in prison, that they know that, oh, the family of so-so-so social persons is a member of the family is in prison, and if you suddenly saw them, 
Can't you talk about it? Mm. Can't you report? That, that's what I'm talking that's about. Right. Perhaps that's another aspect that we could... Uh, it's a dangerous uh, aspect. Uh, we've not come to that stage whereby we have some uh, reasonable uh, officers and men who uh, could manage or can manage information. I can tell you, uh, in Meduguri, really? uh, yes, in Meduguri, uh, some a few years back, Boko Haram went to a community and they slaughtered a lot of people. Mm. Uh, reason why? Because they gave the Nigerian military information that they were around or whatever the case may be. And the Nigerian government suffers a lot of uh, inf uh, um, suffer lack of information from the, uh, you know, the civilian people, the populace. Community. Yes, because community. nobody wants to die uh, for giving out information. And it's, it happens. That's why you have one or two bad eggs in every given society, not even the police, not even the ministry. In every given society, you have people like that pick columnists and negative people who go back and, uh, you know, inform these criminals that, hey, this is the person that called us and told us about uh, this something. I was discussing something personally, I personally, some few weeks ago. I was carrying out an investigation. I called a particular agency and I spoke with one of these guys that, hey, please confirm if XYZ person has this license to operate. Do you know, all of a sudden, within an hour, the person I was investigating made a payment to that account mm. to prove because they are trying to see Whoa. if it's actually licensed to carry out uh, private uh, security activities business. So how he got that information that mm. there's an investigation going on about his license, mm. I don't know. Quickly, he made that payment within an hour. And I got a call, I said, this person just paid. How did he get the account number? So he wants to save his own job in the mm. presence of his client because the client wants to verify him. Mm. That find out if this guy is uh, licensed and if he belongs to this association. You understand? So I knew the person I spoke with. I spoke with only one person. Mm. And I knew that information went out through that person. So what I'm trying to say is this. We must be very careful. Our officers and men must be very, very careful when it comes to information management because they must remember that. Because before you join, an, join the military or the police, you saw an oath of allegiance. And most of them think that thing doesn't work. It will catch you. It will backfire. Because if you think you saw an oath of allegiance to protect the Nigerian state, and then at the end of the day, you are stabbing the Nigerian state, you, 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 if you don't have your justice here on it, divine justice awaits you. What we need mm. to be looking at is the Nigerian state. We need to look at how our country will bounce back again. We don't need, you don't need to put on that uniform and start being a threat to the same uh, 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 the people you have to secure. Yeah. And the people you are supposed to secure. Mm. A lot needs to be done. Training, training, training is also essential on information management. And also people must be used as scapegoats. You think you want to send an information. Because that is where intelligence comes to play. Any information you release is an intelligence to the criminals. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand? And if you release such information, it can bring down a state. When Americans were going after Osama bin Laden, uh, Obama was in the control room, the mission control room, and they were watching that uh, operation night. Just imagine if somebody had given out information that, ah, they are coming to kill Obama, or the Americans. The America is finished. Mm -hmm. So information Osama, management Osama, is, yeah. is Osama. Osama bin Laden, I mean, yeah. <laughs> information Management is very important, and people should see that as part of nation building. Interesting. Uh, so if, if you ask um, those who are in charge of the prisons, they will tell you that they've been you know, rehabilitating, there have been funds you know, coming in and all of that. Uh, recently, the correctional facility um, you know, officers said that Bob Risky is not giving VIP treatment in prison. Ooh. Bob Risky. Bob Risky. He's not giving VIP treatment. I'm even thinking prison. which of the cell it would be. Is it uh, <laughs> male, female? No, he said, he said he's male. So that's to tell you that yeah. they are VIPs. Oh, he has know. confirmed his gender yeah. in the prison. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's before he went to prison. Okay. So that has to tell you that they are VIPs, you know, within the prison. And prison has its own you know, different chambers, you know, for VIPs and all of that. Is that to say that all of these facilities that are, that are meant to be reformed or rehabilitated are being channeled. You know, these phones are being channeled, channeled, channeled for the VIPs, you know, to be kept well. well I, get I, I, I think uh, I've, I've heard about that VIP uh, of a team. Yeah. Uh, personally, maybe I might try to investigate about that. But I think uh, that is a wrong. Uh, when you get to the prison, you're all equal. Uh, I, I see no reason where, why you get to a prison and you're in a VIP. Maybe after, you know, embezzling billions of naira, you're being kept in the VIP. There's someone who, still, uh, who stole goats or some pot of soup somewhere and they're still in a, mm. in a bad zone. Mm. So everybody going into the correctional facility are roommates. <laughs> they are all roommates. <laughs> because crime is crime. Let's leave it there. You don't have a... <laughs> they are roommates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's so leave it there. Let the, let the uh, be roommates and all right. prison facility should work on that. Nice. We'll leave the conversation here now. Dixie Nosaje, a certified master anti-terrorism specialist. Thank you for your time on the Thank program. Thank you very much for having me.